Hello, kindergartners. This week, our reading is a fable, meaning we're going to learn a lesson from the story. On that note, make sure you're thinking about our essential question. How do rules keep us safe? The title of our reading is The Tale of Benjamin Bunny, written and illustrated by Beatrix Potter. One morning, a little rabbit sat on a bank. He pricked his ears and listened to the trit trot, trit trot of a pony. A gig was coming along the road. It was driven by Mr. McGregor, and beside him sat Mrs. McGregor in her best bonnet. As soon as they had passed, little Benjamin Bunny slid down into the road and set off with a hop, skip, and a jump to call upon his relations, who lived in the wood at the back of Mr. McGregor's garden. Relations is just a fancy word for family. That wood was full of rabbit holes, and in the neatest, sandiest hole of all lived Benjamin's aunt and his cousins, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Mrs. Rabbit earned her living by knitting rabbit wool mittens and muffetees. Little Benjamin did not very much want to see his aunt. He came round the back of the fir tree and nearly tumbled upon the top of his cousin Peter. Peter was sitting by himself. He looked poorly and was dressed in a red cotton handkerchief. Peter, said little Benjamin in a whisper, who has got your clothes? Peter replied, the scarecrow in Mr. McGregor's garden. Peter said he thought he might feel better if he went for a walk. They went away hand in hand and got upon the flat top of the wall at the bottom of the wood. From here, they looked down into Mr. McGregor's garden. Peter's coat and shoes were plainly to be seen upon the scarecrow, topped with an old hat of Mr. McGregor's. Little Benjamin said that the first thing to be done was to get back Peter's clothes in order that they might be able to use the handkerchief. They took them off the scarecrow. There had been rain during the night. There was water in the shoes, and the coat was somewhat shrunk. Benjamin tried on the hat, but it was too big for him. Then he suggested that they should fill the handkerchief with onions as a little present for his aunt. Peter did not seem to be enjoying himself. He kept hearing noises. Benjamin, on the contrary, was perfectly at home and ate a lettuce leaf. The lettuces certainly were very fine. Peter did not eat anything. He said he should like to go home. Presently, he dropped half the onions. Little Benjamin led the way along a little walk on planks under a sunny red brick wall. The mice sat on their doorsteps, cracking cherry stones. They winked at Peter and little Benjamin Buddy. They got amongst flower pots and frames and tubs. Peter heard noises worse than ever. His eyes were as big as lollipops. He was a step or two in front of his cousin when he suddenly stopped. This is what those little rabbits saw around that corner. Little Benjamin took one look and then, in half a minute less than no time, he hid himself and Peter in the onions underneath a large basket. The cat got up and stretched herself and came and sniffed at the basket Perhaps she liked the smell of onions. Anyway, she sat down upon the top of the basket. She sat there for five hours. The sun got round behind the wood, and it was quite late in the afternoon, but still the cat sat upon the basket. At length, there was a pitter-patter, pitter-patter, and some bits of mortar fell from the wall above. 
The cat looked up and saw old Mr. Benjamin Bunny prancing along the top of the wall of the upper terrace. He was looking for his son. He took a tremendous jump off the wall, the top of the wall onto the top of the cat and pushed it off the basket and kicked it into the greenhouse, scratching off a handful of fur. The cat was too much surprised to scratch back. When old Mr. Bunny had driven the cat into the greenhouse, he locked the door. Then he came back to the basket and took out his son, Benjamin, by the ears. Then he took out his nephew, Peter. Then he took out the handkerchief of onions and marched out of the garden. When Mr. McGregor returned, he observed several things which perplexed him. It looked as though some person had been walking all over the garden in a pair of clogs, only the footmarks were too little. Also, he could not understand how the cat had shut herself up inside the greenhouse. When Peter got home, his mother forgave him because she was so glad to see that he had found his shoes and coat. Cottontail and Peter folded up the handkerchief, and old Mrs. Rabbit strung up the onions and hung them from the kitchen ceiling with the bunches of herbs. The End <laughs>